another edition of Wrestling With Faith, the wrestling volumes. Uh, wrestling With Faith, uh, follow us at uh, wrestling uh, underscore faith. At, no, I tell a lie. Faith underscore wrestling. You think I'd know my own Twitter handle by now. So it's faith underscore wrestling at Twitter. And check us out on YouTube as well. Wrestling With Faith UK, all one word, where we get people on the show to discuss all matters of things to do with wrestling. Obviously, things to do with faith and also mental health. And in some cases, we discuss all three. So if you want to be on the show, uh, just drop me a message at Twitter, faith underscore wrestling. But I'm pleased by no means to um, introduce a fantastic American talent. Check out his videos on Twitter and on YouTube as well, because this guy's got some serious manoeuvres and he's taken some serious injuries as well, looking at some of his Twitter photos. This is Jake Lander. Jake, how are you doing? I'm, do- I'm doing good today. Today's a-, today's a good day. I've actually got a show a little bit later on, so... I know, I've retweeted that out as well today to try and get some more interest, man. So, fantastic. So, Jake, fantastic. Great to hear you're doing well. Let's kick off then, man, with this show that you're doing tonight. Tell us all about it. What's the promotion? Yeah. What's on the bill? And what are you doing? So, it's uh, it's a promotion I've in Chicago. I've been in Chicago a lot. And, uh, you know, I've been wrestling for almost eight years now. So, to be in, in one area like Chicago, uh, it's hard to find a place where I can say, Hey, I'm debuting here. You know, it's a new crowd, a new group of people. So we're on championship wrestling, you know, they, they contacted me, they want to get me in there. And uh, I, I couldn't be more happier to go. Uh, I've actually got some friends that I haven't seen in a while. The pandemic kind of split a lot of people up in the wrestling world. And for some reason, after the pandemic, a lot of paths just haven't crossed. It used to be almost weekend. You know, I'd, I'd see these people more than my own family sometimes. They became That's family. Right. So, yeah. uh, so I'm, I'm just excited to, to get on the road. It's about a three-hour drive from where I'm at to there. So okay. ready to get there, see everybody. And uh, it, it's, all, it's a great feeling to be a wrestler, to be in front of a new crowd. As nerve-wracking as it may be, because you don't know how they're going to you know, perceive you. You've kind of got this idea of what you portray. But, you know, who knows? Who knows how it's going to go? The mixed reactions, that's the best part. That's what makes me nervous before I hit the, you know, the curtain because the moves and all the, the wrestling stuff, that's just, for me now, is, uh, uh, you know, that's the payoff. Yeah. You know, you, you, you're in a room for, you know, eight to ten minutes, maybe 20 if you're lucky, if you're in the main event, you know, but people don't see you driving, you know, three, four, five, six hours, sometimes even more people ask you, why do you do it? And it, it's for that, that moment right there. Your music's playing. You're waiting for that beat to drop. You know, you've got your, your cool moment to exit that curtain, but you're just wondering, how, how am I going to get perceived? Are they going to boo me? Are they going to hate me? Are they going to like me? And then you break through the curtain and it just goes away. And th- that feeling has, has been the same since the moment I debuted, you know, almost eight years, you know, later, it's the same. So I'm, I'm excited for that moment right there that's awesome man. and it's good to know that like even like eight years in the game as well you've still got that same passion and it's nice to, it's refreshing to hear and honest to hear that you still get nerves as well mm-hmm. going out to the shows as well because i suppose the worst thing is and i've had this chat with with other people within the industry as well like people who are still in it and people who are retired is the worst thing is no reaction at all whether it's mm-hmm. just a lukewarm passive sort of reaction if you're getting booed or if you're getting cheered at least you've got that connection right. with the crowd in some way shape or form so that's awesome so what type of match are we in tonight then and who, we, who are you against uh so tonight I'm, I'm up against a guy uh who from everything that i found out uh trained with black and brave you know yeah uh, seth rollins academy they they've uh they've got a lot of people i don't want to get his name wrong because i've actually never met you know the guy i've never actually seen him wrestle so it, it's a new all around it's right. it's great to be wrestling you know someone new like this as well as you know this company that i'm working for uh but conan lichen is his name and right. this guy look you know i'm, I'm about five three maybe five four if i stuff some socks in my boots you know what i mean <laughs> this this guy looks massive on picture, so I'm I'm up for uh, I'm up for a real treat tonight. You've got to go in with that sort of Rey Mysterio versus the Great Carly oh. or Big Show sort of attitude, aren't you, man? Do you know what I mean? So yeah. the old David Absolutely. versus Goliath attitude, yeah, man. That's yeah. that's probably my most uh, mindset, you know, because everybody's, you know, not very few people are my size. I'll, I'll keep it, you know, nice for me there. 
but a lot of people are bigger. So I, I've always got that mindset of, Hey, I want to prove people wrong. You know, I want to prove people wrong because they're going to see these, this image in the ring. And they're going to see me here. And this guy up here and immediately, gonna, Oh, that guy's going to get squashed. He's yeah. going to get thrown around. So uh, it's always a great deal of, uh, of kind of like, yeah, well, you didn't think about that. When, when maybe <laughs> I start that Man, so. If anybody wants to look into biblical stories, one of the most famous ones is David and Goliath. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Everybody wrote that guy off and look how that turned out. So, you know what I mean? So I'll, I'll be rooting on for you in spirit as well uh, tonight, man. I'll be looking forward to the results as well when you get them tweeted out. So obviously, like you mentioned, like wrestlers in, in a similar height to you. I think, would you agree that maybe in the last few years, we've started to see all different kinds of shapes and sizes as opposed to the all-round bodybuilding sort of physique that was maybe around, say, in the 80s, 90s. We've started to see a lot more um, high-flying wrestlers over the recent years, such as like Trey Miguel, um, TJP. Um, obviously, Rey Mysterio has been around for 30-plus years now, um, doing, you know, champion as well, you know, well under six foot. Um, do you think wrestling now as a performer on the indies showcases a lot more different shapes and sizes and styles of wrestling than maybe maybe did 20, 30 years ago? Oh, absolutely. I think that uh, that's something that I kind of think about all the time is how fortunate. Because, uh, I mean, it was different even, you know, seven years ago, seven, eight years ago. Uh, it was still kind of on that, like, the bigger guy aspect. Even, you know, so just recently have we had that real big turnaround where, I think it's just wrestling became uh, so secretive, you know, back in the seventies, the eighties and nineties, you know, everybody was arguing about if it was real or not and this and that, you know, I think it was so protected then that you almost needed, you know, those big guys to really, to really help that story out for you. You know, if it's real or not, that kind of thing. And I think more recently, with the internet and, and how, you know, people are, and how wrestlers are, are more social. You didn't have that back then, you know, you, you couldn't, you know, get on there and DM the macho man and ask him questions. <laughs> you had to believe what you were seeing, you know, yeah. you didn't know anything about his life and things like that. So now with, with that turn of society and with wrestling, I think wrestling became more of an, an art form because it, it got brought to so many people's eyes everybody looks at wrestling differently. You've got your hardcore fans, you've got your high flying fans, your story fans, you know, and it got broadcasted in, the, in this wide array uh, of audience all over the world. And so with that, I think that people fell in love with the art form of professional wrestling and what it is and the emotions that you can get from it, the feelings, the inspiration, you know, the up and down roller coasters of a match, I think that people really started to fall in love with that aspect and not so much just these big brute guys, you know, hitting each other and that, that are real big, you know, obviously there's still room for that. There's room for everyone, you know, in wrestling, no matter what your shape size is. Um, but I think that it's just the simple fact that wrestling outside of that purely strictly kayfabe world, when it became yeah. a little more exposed to say, I think people just, you know, okay, we understand this. We know what it is, but this is great. Yeah, you know, and it's not every week you see guys flying through tables and flying off the top. And <laughs> I love it. So we're going to dispend our disbelief and we're just going to fall in love with it. 100%. And I think you touched upon it there. Now, it's much more appreciative, I think, as a wrestling fan, uh, regardless of what generation of wrestling you grew up with, the performing art aspect of it, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes the not so amazing to watch in the ring wrestlers can cut some of the greatest promos so they can get away with the lack of ability. If you can get on the mic and absolutely destroy somebody with your words before you get your hands on them and vice versa. There are some people as well out there, some men and women who aren't great on the mic but as soon as the bell goes, it's like, this is what I've paid to see. You know what I mean? So there, there, there's so many different aspects to it. Like you say, you've still got your hardcore wrestlers who are willing to literally just use their body as a, as, as a living weapon. And also you've got your high flyers as well. And I think now with the fact that, you know, it, it's a great time to be a wrestling fan, would you agree? Obviously, we've got WWE, which has been here since time. Oh, absolutely. 
But the fact that now we've got Impact Wrestling, which you know really recovered from the what happened from TNA, um, we've got NWA, we've got MLW, we've got GCW, and obviously we've got AEW, which just seems to be growing and growing. <clears throat> and within those organisations, you can see every type of wrestler, male and female, tag team, stables. So would you agree now is probably one of the best times to be a wrestling fan than maybe 10 years ago? Absolutely. You know, just just from 10 years ago, you had, you know, such a small pool to to watch from. And I remember even, you know, back then, level and i think that you know just 10 you know years ago 10 15 years ago people didn't see that as professional wrestling you know they just seen oh if it's not on tv you know it must not be real it must not be professional and then the internet took over and it, it allowed all of these companies you know like impact gcw uh to just shine to show the talent that they actually had and, and through that time you had your your hardcore fans for each of those companies but more eyes on anything is always going to be better. You know, rather somebody's speaking good or speaking ill about you. If they're speaking about you, you're making money. hundred <laughs> percent. And I think as well, like for me during the pandemic, which I um, I know probably the same for you um, being uh, on the indie scene, a lot of wrestlers um, plans were obviously shelved for a mm-hmm. long, long time. Um, uh, from a wrestling fans perspective for me, working from home it opened my eyes up to a lot more promotions such as mlw um nwa as well Mm -hmm. and even things like looking more into like new japan you know the old and the current new japan as well on there um and and quite a few other things in terms of wrestling you know like gcw like the historic rise of you know ring of honor and things like that as a wrestling performer though what did you do to keep your mind in the game during lockdown? Oh, it was, it was tough. Uh, it, it was particularly tough for me because during the pandemic and lockdown, I was actually going through an injury. So right. not only was I not able to be in the ring because of the pandemic, but even when the sto- you know, the show started with, you know, just a few people in the crowd or no capacity, I was still sidelined. So I was very happy for all my friends because I I felt what they were going through. You know, you're on the road every weekend, sometimes four or five times a week. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it just stops. And then you got to go back to, you know, what we call the normal life. It's like, well, what do we do now? You know, we're not punching nobody in the face on the weekends. We're not jumping off of nothing. How do we act? What, how do we become, you know, normal again? And that's, that's really hard, you know, especially if you love wrestling. Yeah. If you love anything in life and it gets taken away from you for whatever reason, you're going to go into this, you know, depression, you know, you're, you're really going to be hit with some, some decisions to be made, you know, things start thinking about, well, what if this happens again? You know, because for a lot of us, for me in my life, this was the first ever global pandemic thing I've ever had to, you know, really deal with. Yeah. I didn't really know. I mean, I knew it would happen, but, you know, you never think about it. And a lot of my friends in in wrestling and, you know, all over, it was the same thing for them. And with, with them being able to go back, size of relief, you know, that there's light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, for me, I was sitting at home, you know, milking some injuries. So it was particularly harder to try and keep focus uh, for me, especially during that pandemic time. So during that time, then you, you mentioned on it as well, like, you know, there was some depressing aspects to it. And how did you cope in terms of your mental health? How did you try and keep yourself out of sort of sinking into a, a further depression? Was there, did you sort of sort of bounce off friends and family or did you study like other wrestling art forms or look into things? I mean, how did, how did Jake Landers cope with, with that side of things during 
the times when it was really, really restrictive. It's uh, it's it's kind of a, a two part here for me, because um, the the first part of it, obviously, like I said I had my injuries, so I was I was upset about that, and my injuries were a lot more severe, and then it had some offset injuries as well. And during that time, you know, the doctors basically told me, you know, we don't know if you're going to be able to wrestle again, uh, and it looked very very slim that it was a possibility Uh, I had ACL reconstruction surgery and then I was about two weeks out from getting cleared from that and and that was right when they started opening shows with no crowds things like that so I was like oh man this is gonna be perfect you know I have a sideline got my injury fixed now they're you know I'm gonna get to come back and then unfortunately I had what's called uh, compartment syndrome in both of my legs and uh the doctors explained that to me the best way they could that I understood was that happens often in car accidents, any type of traumatic, you know, hits on your legs. And when they asked me if I've ever been anything like that, I said, no, I've, you know, never been in a car accident. And then I got to thinking, well, man, my legs hit that map, you know, a lot yeah, all the time. And you don't think about it. You know, you're worried about your upper body, your head, your neck, you know, falling correctly making sure you're safe you never really think about you know your legs too much and how much actually you know force they're taking so i believe that you know that is kind of what started that compartment syndrome for me had it in both legs it was basically blood clots uh anytime i would do cardiovascular activity and your blood would start flowing in the fluids instead of just kind of circulating through your body mine was actually pulling up in the exact same spots in both my legs And so I had to get emergency surgery for that. Um, My right leg actually got infected from one of the surgeries. I had to have a tube in there. Uh, Amputation was a a topic of concern when I was seriously that extreme. Yeah, it it got extreme fast. I I seen that light at the end of the tunnel when I was about ready to uh, to come back from my knee injury, and then this happened. You know. And I just had to keep telling myself, you know, God doesn't put anything on your shoulders that he doesn't trust you with. Yeah, and I man. knew I was going to get through it, you know. And, but I did. I, I, I did, after that, slip into a depression that I, I never experienced before. Mm-hmm. And that was, I wanted nothing to do with wrestling. You know, I was so sad. And I was so upset that everything I've loved for my entire life, you know, I watched it when I was a kid. Me and my dad watched it. Everybody told me in school, you're never going to become a wrestler. You're too short. That's, you know became a wrestler. I loved that part of me. And then doing it for, you know, six and a half, seven years at that time, it seemed like it was going to get taken away from me. Yeah. And so I just, I wanted nothing to do with it. Um, I, I gave in for myself. I didn't watch anything on TV. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't really get on social media much. I didn't post a whole lot. If, if you look through my Instagram, you know, from my last knee post to, you know, the next one, there's a solid six, seven months where I was just social media silent. Um, I was just so upset. And then I had a doctor visit. And one of the things that the doctor said that changed my mind was, uh, you're going to have to find a new hobby. And I thought, this is, this isn't a hobby. This is my life. Yeah. (laughs) Big difference. Spark something back in me. I said, no, because I asked him, I said, is there a chance? Can I return back to physical activity Everything sewed up, and, and he basically said, yeah, you could. But, you know, you're going to have to find a new hobby. And there's a lot of, you know, I read between the fine lines, and then that just sparked something in me. And I used that for motivation, and I, I reached out to people who I knew cared about me that I cared about. And to get over that depression, surrounded myself with something that I put on the back burner. That was wrestling. I was watching it every day. I would do cardio. I would watch matches. I was, on, you know, posting more talking to friends and what I thought was going to be ripped away from me is actually something that helped me through a great depression, you know, keeping that faith, keeping the faith that nothing is going to last forever. You know, we're going to get through this dark time. There's always light at the end of that tunnel and surrounding myself with the one thing I loved that I thought was going to get taken away from me, helped me through this, you know, just to fight. I I just had to fight. So. And it's amazing as well that you took that sort of negative and could easily be perceived to be quite, and I'm not saying it was intended that way, quite a patronizing comment from a doctor saying right. you've got to find a different hobby. And it's right. like, no, 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 no. Hob- hobbies are what I do. I collect wrestling figures. 
Do you know what I mean? That's what I do, Jake. That's a hobby. Do you know what I mean? You're actually putting your life, well, your, your, your body through a lot of physical prep before you get into the combat situation, which is a completely different ball game to being a hobby. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's amazing. So you bounce back from that. You kept the faith. Praise God for that. Because like you say, you know, storms don't last forever. Do you know what I mean? Because every sea has a shore. Do you know what I mean? And that's what the Bible teaches us, doesn't it? It's just that, you know, just persist. Keep your eyes. Keep your keep your mind and your heart on the faith, on the word. And we'll get through it. And we'll get through it together. And thankfully, you did that as well. So that's awesome. So... On that then, you got back into the wrestling. Here we are now. But I want to go back to right from the very, very beginning. What was your first ever exposure to wrestling, ever? The, the first ever thing I, I remember watching uh, from wrestling was my dad used to, they used to have his, the, the VHR, the VCR. Sorry, it's it's yeah. my time. So <laughs> it's my generation, VCR. that man. <laughs> yeah. so he, used to have those and he would record almost every pay per view. Yeah. Uh, like even before he had me. So I, I've got some good, you know, tapes. I like, I love to watch. Uh, one of the things that I remember watching that he actually recorded was uh, the Halloween Havoc. Oh, and WCW, yes, w remember that you know, it, it, yeah, I didn't know yeah. what it was like. Wrestling had been around, you know, my dad talked about it, but I was young, you know, and I got I remember you know seeing videos of me watching it, but I don't remember the first thing I remember is, is that you know, and, and seeing just, just seeing it all and then kind of being mesmerized by it and then sitting down and watching it and then. You know, then me and my dad started watching it all the time, and then I, you know, watching Raws and and the Smackdowns and things like that. So, that's awesome! What a great way to start. Because normally, a lot of people's default thing, because of its coverage and because it is the biggest brand, is WWF slash WWE. Um, but it's it's nice that you that mentioned that actually no, it was WCW was the first thing that I watched. Yeah. So from that, then what uh, superstars stood out for you in terms of wow, I want to do what he or she can do. Do you know what I mean? What what superstars did you look at and think, yeah, I could do that? I mean, I, I obviously, you know, knowing I was I was smaller than the rest of everyone that I was around in, in school and grade school and things like that, I loved Rey Mysterio. I was yeah. able to connect with Rey, you know, because he was always in that David and Goliath battle. And I was actually able to take take that message from the TV most of the time and and – use it you know in school if I was being bullied for being small and things like that it just it just kept me hope that you know you can be small out there in the real world or you can be a superhero because that's what they were in my eyes yeah. you know so I never gave that up and obviously John Cena was another one I think I had I think I made my parents buy me his CD twice <laughs> I had every in. I was part of the chain gang chain gang I dressed up in John Cena for Halloween you know I I went to a convention center here and I bought the, the word life knuckles. Uh, so, <laughs> so that was one of my favorites, you know, and just, just everybody, you know, that was a wrestler at that time was, was everything to me, you know, everything from the little guys to, then I was motivated to see how, you know, big these muscles on these guys are getting. And, you know, yeah. I wanted to lift weights. And so I, I feel like every little aspect of that early on of what I didn't know then was going to be, you know, a career, I think implanted something in me, you know, yeah. the fast pace, the, the, just owning being small, you know, just, this is me. This is who I am. I'm going to prove you wrong in anything you, you probably say. And, you know, that, and to get into the gym and, you know, becoming more than a high flyer. I love the gym. I love, you know, lifting heavy weights and just, you know, people, People say, oh, you can't lift that. Or, you don't, you know, they don't think I'm going to lift this guy up in the ring. I love proving them wrong. So yeah. not only do I want to do it that way, but I want to be safe with doing it as well. So I think oh. I was just imprinted almost so much early on that I didn't realize until I look back at times like this when I get asked. And I'm like, oh, you know, that makes a lot of sense. So with that then, obviously you looked at the, 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 the people like Rey Mysterio who was – 
didn't probably get a decent run in WCW, probably had a bit more success in ECW, certainly had a lot of success and still does in WWE. Um, I think he's pretty much won almost every belt that's been available um, since he's been in WWE. What styles then from there, when you started to train to become a wrestler yourself, were you really into incorporating into the, you know, Jake Lander? Yeah, so the the high flyer was was what I kind of fell into when I first started uh, training. You know, I, I had a lot of, uh, you know, name ideas that I was, you know, thinking around at the time, and they all had to do with, with high flying. Um, I think the the one I always tell that cracks people up. I was I was going with uh, Skylar Sky. I was right. I was one of the, Skylar Sky. I was going to be jumping through the sky, and you know, I was just going to be this high flyer, crazy person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was that was actually that's quite catchy. That actually, man, I do yeah, like that. To be fair. So yeah, if anybody was watching, you know, feel free. I'm not using it. So uh, <laughs> he's not going to come chasing you for copyright. Style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The fast paced high flying. I love submissions, you know. Uh, I, I always thought those were cool. I didn't quite understand them watching them. Like, I didn't know. And I think that's what really drew me in was trying to learn all of these submissions because they're very meticulous, you know. And the one wrong move, you could hurt yourself just as much as you're trying to inflict pain on the other opponent. So, I really love the high flying and the, the ground submission game because I wrestled uh, in high school. So, uh, the mat techniques were there for me already. So I was just trying to combine those together, really. Fantastic. Yeah, so that's a great way to start off, though, isn't it? Like, college wrestling is so much more different, would you agree, than what we see in terms of, you know, sports entertainment, the mainstream wrestling, and even a a vast majority of the indie wrestling. Because for me, like, it's it's not a massive thing in the UK is wrestling at, college level um or anything like that it's it's not and and it's quite mind-blowing considering we are one of the biggest audiences in the world for wrestling you know in terms of viewership but what what did you find that really helped with college wrestling obviously you mentioned about the mat there's not am am i right in saying tell me if i'm wrong there's none of this sort of really high flying sort of maneuvers that you do with college wrestling is it's literally is it a lot of grappling and a lot of on the ground technique yeah, that you so need the, a lot of the technique for the mat style wrestling is what i call it you know the the college style wrestling a lot of the technique that you learn is kind of brute strength you know mm-hmm. your, your objective is to put you know your opponent's you know shoulders on the mat that's that's your main goal and really however you can get it there that's what your your goal is but the technique side of it the finesse what really makes you good you know, no matter what your weight class is, is the, you know, body manipulation. You know, if, if you've got a guy shooting in on your legs, you learn how to sprawl out and you learn very quickly that wherever the head and the neck goes, the body's going to follow. So yeah, yeah. For, a, for what's, you know, in the wrestling world is known as a cross face, you know, you move the head that way, your body's going to roll over. Yeah. Little manipulation, things like that. If a guy's working on your legs, you got his legs, how to turn an ankle pick, just all those things. That's the technical side of it. That's what makes you good. You know, if you're big and you're strong and you can throw a guy down, you're probably going to win more matches per se than the technical guy. But right. if you know all of your stuff and you got some tricks up your sleeve, you're going to be hard to beat. So one of the guys, the, what I- one of the guys I, I think about when you talk in that way about the technical side of it. For me, certainly had a resurgence since his uh, move companies is Brian Danielson, because for me, he just seems to be, again, not the biggest dog in the yard by any stretch. But in terms of technical ability, I, I can't think of anybody at the moment currently mainstream who has who has got that that kind of all round technical ability, the grapple as well as the physical mm-hmm. side of it, as well as the aggression side of it. Who do you look up to now in terms of, you know, like currently, who do you look at and think, wow, they've really got something special? Oh, I, I absolutely love 
uh, you know, Brian Danielson for exactly what you just said. You, you can't watch anybody else right now uh, in professional wrestling and get the same feelings that you get from him. You know, when he was in his triple threat with Batista and, and Orton, you didn't like that wasn't because all of those guys are great wrestlers and things like that. Like, yeah, they're, they're phenomenal wrestlers, but that was that nitty gritty coming back, you know, the underdog story that he put into there. That's what got you, you know, yeah. while he was in there with some, some phenomenal wrestlers and him himself, but, you know, what he delivers in the ring is like no other. And if you're a professional wrestler out there and you're not studying tapes, because he's been great for a long time and he yeah. just keeps getting better. And that's the best part. Of the thing. You can always get better. There's always more to learn. Uh, but he's someone that I look up to a lot. You know, this version of him, the WWE version, the Ring of Honor version. Yeah. You know, Japan, like just all the different versions. He just, he just keeps getting better and better. But not a single part of his career can you look at and go, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that. Hundred percent. He just seems to soak it all up like a sponge. Doesn't he? Wherever he's been, whoever he's been with, he seems to have sort of, as well as his own stamp on it, just sort of magnif like sort of magpied and soaked up what other people have done. And and I'm absolutely loving the Blackpool Combat Club at the moment. I mean, not only is William Regal obviously from uh, from the UK. Not a million miles from where I am. He's in Lancashire, uh, Blackpool in Lancashire. I'm from Yorkshire. So it's just over like the Pennines. But, um, and and I've been privileged to actually see William Regal wrestle as well at a WWE show uh, back in 2001, I think it was, Insurrection pay-per-view, uh, which was over in the UK. And even though he was a heel at the time, like a big heel, um, he got the biggest pop of the night. You know, and bearing in mind, this is an event where Triple H, Stone Cold, The Undertaker were there, Big Show. There was a lot of big names. And I think <clears throat> that kind of UK influence has, has been a real big impact on, on some wrestlers um, as well. I mean, we, we say about how impactful Japanese wrestling is has been as well and American wrestling has been. There's been a lot of big influences in the UK as well. Um, and I'm, you know, I think it's just great now. We're living in an era where you look at what AEW are doing. You know, they've got Ring of Honor. They're now doing the Forbidden Door in June with New Japan. Mm -hmm. And we've seen a lot of these guys what have been across to New Japan and come back. Obviously, everybody knows the Bullet Club and most variations of the Bullet Club. Mm -hmm. For me now, as a wrestling fan, looking at this, and bearing in mind, I grew up in an area pre pre attitude era, which was, you know, your macho mans, your ultimate warriors, Legion of Dooms, Demolition, you know, Shawn Michaels when he was in the Rockers, you know what I mean? That that was the sort of era that I initially started in. For me now, it's just as exciting because I'm seeing all these Japanese wrestlers coming over as well. Mm -hmm. NXT, U uh, NXT UK now bringing up UK wrestlers, you know, we've had obviously things like, you know, Pete Dunne, who's now called Butch, for the life yeah. of me, I don't know why they've changed his name. That'll yeah, I, that'll never work with me ever because Pete Dunn as a wrestler was absolutely phenomenal. So yeah. now it's a really, Pete really Dunn. good time. Pete Dunn. Pete Dunn. Pete Dunn, you know. I know. He's not butch, you know. And it's just, it seems to me, it's like this gimmick that they've got with, you know, with, with shoving Pete Dunn into this stable, it's like a really poor man's peaky blinders. Because we've got these, you know, British and Irish wrestlers working together. And it's just, sometimes, man, you know yourself, if it ain't broke, let's not try and repair it, yeah? Let's just let it flow and grow. But I think Pete Dunn will eventually come back to being Pete Dunn. But sadly, I think it'll be when he gets released from WWE, he'll go somewhere and get back to his original form. But it's just nice now we're getting this this big mix of Japanese, American, Canadian and UK wrestlers all coming together as well. Um, what? Where do you see yourself then, Jake? What, what's the goal at the end of the day? Where do you want to be? I mean, what brushes have you had with with sort of big promotions as well? Sorry, so what was that last bit? The, uh, that Sorry, bit? yeah, I was just asking, sort of where do you see yourself? Where do you want to be? And what brushes have you had over the past eight years with bigger, more well-known promotions? So right now, you know, honestly, I'd be open up to going anywhere. I, I love, 
I love that there's so much of, of the, you know, WWE is better, AEW is better, Impact's better, because you need that. The, the yeah. industry needs that. It's always going to be there. And, you know, if everybody just merges into the same thing, like you said, AEW is doing their forbidden door, you know, and they got the ring of honor. So if, if WWE starts doing the same thing, it loses its that you lose that battle. You know, yeah. WWE needs to be what it is so we can have the WrestleMania. Yes. AEW needs to, to, needs to give us that everything that WWE isn't, not because they don't want to, because I think the higher ups understand that everything has a place and everything, everything works together. No matter how dysfunctional it may seem to everybody, it's all working together. So I'd love to go anywhere. Uh, one of the, one of the places right now that I would love to go to is AEW. It, it's, it's still at its roots, you know, it's still a baby to say for other companies. Uh, so to get in there on, you know, let's say a little bit higher than the ground floor. Now it's been out for, you know, going on four years, three years, something like that. Yeah. Um, and I'd love to get in there. I've got a lot of friends, you know, going on in there who've been in and out. Uh, some are, are mainstays there. So to see them would be great. I feel like I'd fit in real well. Uh, I feel like I'd be able to, really capitalize on myself because I, I like to look at myself as, as something that's not well you know a lot of you know you got a smaller guy I love to fight I'm a high flyer but also I, I can bring the strength and submission side so to be able to put myself on, on a big show like that I feel like I'd really shine uh, impact gave me an opportunity before the pandemic a few times on some explosions that is uh, awesome yeah I saw that on your Twitter feed oh, as well yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So my my first um, impact was with Trey Miguel. Wow, uh, that was a that was a great moment. I remember it was in New York. Uh, we were passing in New York and and going into Canada, you know, the next couple of days, and you know, just being there, I basically got that opportunity. You know, I wasn't booked on the show. You know, I was traveling with my trainer at the time. He was booked, and uh, just from being there. And being being available, being ready, being being helpful. You know, there's a lot of off screen stuff that, that wrestlers do. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. I've heard that from a lot of guys that there's there's so much that goes on before yeah. the cameras, you know. There's and, a lot. Yeah. And that was my first real uh experience with with that whole, you know, T V style of wrestling. And for wrestlers, when you're, you know, you're, you've, you've got your time, you're going over your match. It's a whole different aspect when there, because you're talking about commercial breaks. You're talking about camera one, camera twos, camera threes. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, you're actually needing to plan out how long it's going to take you to walk. And so the cameras can follow you and swing in there. So I got this great opportunity. I was so excited. And then they just start throwing this stuff on me. Like I'm some professional and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is, I don't know what I was more nervous about, the the match or hitting all these camera cues and these times <laughs> that I was supposed to do. Uh, it was it was the greatest thing ever because it really helped my confidence. Yeah. It really showed me that, listen, I, I can be here, you know, and at any moment, this is just a step away. And so I've always latched onto that one time. I got a couple times after that and uh, I've been grateful for them because they've taught me so much and I'm able to take that and pass it on to a lot of these young guys here. Some of them yeah. that I train, some of them that I, I, you know, ride the road with. And so that way they don't show up to them and get all flabbergasted by these uh, time cues and camera angles and yeah. things like that. So. so with that then, I mean, that's an amazing opportunity. And, and you know, you've, you've done Impact now, uh, you know, a few times. Are there any other? Um, I mean, you might not want to say anything just yet, but... Are there any other potential opportunities, any any doors that you're potentially about to kick open, um, say, in the uh, next sort of 12 a, months? Yeah, there's a few. There's a few doors that uh, I've, I've gotten to work with and, and trying to work some stuff out. Uh, that, that If they happen, you know, keep my fingers crossed. Yeah. And make huh? sure not to stay too excited just in case because the thing about wrestling is it can change from one minute to the next. You know, it it's just a, just how the game is, you know, it's a huge gamble and yeah. you're gambling on yourself. Basically, you got to be front and center for yourself. You got to be the judge jury, sometimes executioner for yourself to make sure you, you get into these opportunities. So, but yeah, there's some, there's some doors on the horizon that I'm hopefully uh, ready to open up. Uh, one of the big ones was 
WWE. I was doing a lot of stuff with Evolve before yeah. they actually, you know, away with Evolve. I was wrestling there pretty regularly. Uh, when they were doing the ECW Arena, um, that was one show that that kind of did get get swiped out from you know from under me. Um, mm. I was great to see all my friends there. It was a great show. You know, I think the the main event was that was was JD Drake and Austin Theory. And wow. so now you see what Austin Theory's doing, you know, Austin Theory and I, you know, we've been on some shows together. Fantastic. Uh, he's a phenomenal athlete, but he's even a better person, you know. And JD Drake and, being one of the wingmen as well. Yeah. In so, AW, yeah. Fantastic. And again, I remember like watching JD um on Dark. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times on dark, you know, um, being what I don't know if you still the correct term, like a, uh, almost like a jobber, um, you know, like a, you know, you know, being a bit of a squash, you know, in squash matches and things like that, and he's even getting time on vlogs as well, like Sammy Guevara's vlog and and things like that. So, wow. and it's amazing that you've like crossed paths with these guys, man. I mean, please, please, please. Keep me up to date with everything that's going, man, because you'll be in my prayers on that, and I really, really hope it all works out. I appreciate that. Not a problem. This is the big question I'm going to ask you now, man, right at the very end, and I ask everybody this when I'm doing uh, my podcast with wrestlers or people in the wrestling industry. So, congratulations. Jake Lander, you've just managed to qualify for Survivor Series but you've now been told that you're the captain of a Survivor Series team and you're going against my team. You okay. need to pick four people from any era that are still with us or that have passed on or in any promotion. Who do you go for? Oh, okay. This is a great, great question. I'm, I'm, not, I'm going to try not to take too long to answer it. That's all right, man. Some people, I mean, I've only ever had one person go, boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, Wow. Wow. And then everybody else is just like, whoa, I need to think about this. So you take your time, man. So let's, let's go right off the bat. I'm going to get John Cena just because I had that connection. I want to team up against him. One of them is John Cena. Uh, We're going to go with, we're going to go with Brian Danielson and in his, in his form right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like that, you know, that's a great one. I definitely would love to see the nature boy, Ric Flair, and his like prime. That. Yeah. You know, that's something that uh, – that's one one wrestler who I never, never, ever got to see live. I went to a lot of shows, just never got to. He was on his way you know, out the door, per se, when I was, you know, really getting into it. Um, and then – so we got, what, that's three, one more. Hmm. Let's go. Let's let's bring back the game one last time. Triple H, lace up those boots. Let's do it. Fantastic, right? I need to counter that then. So, to counter your Brian Danielson, I'm going to put in AJ Styles to counter that. Okay. For your John Cena, I'm going to drop in a guy with a bit of muscle and who's not afraid to get hurt and hurt others, and I'm going to go Samoa Joe. Um, for the game, oh, for the game, I've been mad not to bring in the rock yeah. to go toe to toe with the game on that one. And you you've got the nature boy, Ric Flair. So I need to bring somebody who's technical, who's really blown me away. And I think I'm going to go with, there's one or two, but I'm, you know, I'm going to have to make a decision. I'm going to go Kenny Omega on that okay. one. Yeah, that, I'm gonna Kenny go. Was, uh, was one that I was thinking about saying. So that's yeah, I Kenny's Kenny. class, man. And when he comes back from injury, it's going to be explosive because especially where the storylines now developed in AW when oh. him and the uh, the young bucks were now like top dogs, and now like Adam Cole's coming, it's like yeah, thanks for uh, opening the door, but. I kind of don't need you, but I'm going to keep you around for the friendship side of thing. But it's all about me and Red Dragon. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's going to be interesting to see if that comes in where Kenny and the Young Bucks make a face turn. And uh, man, that could be explosive. 
that could be really explosive. So, but you know what, man? I think we've put on the best Survivor Series ever with those teams. Just saying. So. Do you know what I mean, mate? I it, it, it. It's got box office written all over it. So, Jake Lander, it's your floor now, brother. I want you to plug everything where you are, your, uh, your social media, websites, promotions that you work with, just so people can keep a tab of where you are and what you're up to, man. So the floor is yours. Yeah, no, I appreciate you giving me the floor. Uh, I got a lot of videos on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Jake Lander. Usually you can find them and, and you can see anything on there from videos of my first year to recent videos. So be careful what you wish for on that one. Uh, but if you want to head all over to Twitter, my uh, handle is I am underscore Lander. Uh, I'm pretty active on Twitter. I like to retweet, like to post. Uh, I'm, I'm a, do you say GIF or JIF? Is, is I that... say GIF, but it's, it's okay. like tomato, I, I tomato, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So... I'm, a, I'm a GIF guy, so I love posting those. So you can see a lot of those and retweeting those. Uh, Instagram is Lander underscore wrestling. You know, it's a bit differently, but somebody had it already taken, whoever that guy was. <laughs> um, and then Facebook.com slash Jake Lander. Those are my social media feeds and, and handles that you can find me at. And don't be afraid to send me a DM for anything. That's That's one of the one things that I like about myself is that I do my very best because at the end of the day, yeah, I'm a, I'm a professional wrestler. Got a lot of great things that I've accomplished, but I'm still a human being, you know? So if, if another human being needs to reach out to me for anything, I've helped a lot of people through a lot of stuff and I've reached out. So please don't be afraid to reach out to me. Uh, we can talk, talk about just anything. And if I got the answers for you, I'm going to try. God bless you, brother. That's a massive, massive message to put out there for everybody listening and watching. Um, because we are available on Spotify, uh, Amazon, and Anchor, and various other um, audio platforms as well for the podcast, various other podcast pl- platforms, as well as uh, YouTube as well. And it's a, most, it's a fundamental thing to remember that it's a strength to ask for help as well it is a strength to ask for help and that goes for anybody and everybody the world over so jake lander i really really appreciate your time and your effort you've been an absolutely amazing guest on the podcast you've really really gives a lot of content and uh, on behalf of everybody who watches and listens to the podcast god bless for for tonight man godspeed and um, we'll be rooting for you and uh, we can catch up as well and uh, you can let me know how it goes, man, as well. Thank so you, man. this you. has been Wrestling With Faith with Jake Lander on the Wrestling Sessions. You can get us at uh, Faith underscore Wrestling at Twitter and also YouTube, uh, which is Wrestling With Faith UK, all one word. So YouTube.com slash Wrestling With Faith UK. God bless.